Hello, welcome back. Uh, in this exercise, we're going to begin looking at uh, calculating confidence intervals. And so this exercise uh, that we have here is just quite basic. There's not really any context or anything. It's just to go over sort of the, uh, the mechanics of how to calculate it. Uh, before I do that, I want to give a brief, uh, I hope a brief little discussion on just how do these things work and, and what are they. So I'm going to just scroll down a little bit. Oops. And make a scribble in the corner. Um, what I want to do here, I've, I've said before in a few other exercises, if you've seen other videos, that we are often working with these two distributions simultaneously. One is the standard normal distribution that looks something like this with mean zero and standard deviation one. And we are also simultaneously working with our uh, population distribution, or our distribution of, of observation. So here I'm going to draw these uh, on top of each other. So something like this. And this is, you know, assuming that everything is normally distributed, right? Because that makes life easier for us at this point in, in this series of videos when things start to, when our distributions behave badly, things can get more complicated. So everything is normally distributed. Um, so I have a population mean, uh, mu, and here I have a uh, standard error equal to sigma over root n. So on what are these confidence intervals based on? Well, we, we can look at that standard normal distribution and I can define a space whereby if I draw a number at random, just drawing from a hat, um, from a normal distribution, well, I can define these limits such that 95% of the time, or I have a 95% chance, or any confidence level, or any percentage, we often work with 95% because it's the most common, but it doesn't have to be. So here I'm going to work with 95% because that's just for consistency. So I can define these values such that 95% of the time, if I draw a number out of that normally distributed uh, hat, I'll get a number between these two limits. So what that means is that out here in this tail, uh, there's uh, two two and a half percent chance that I'll draw a number way out there, and out here there's a two and a half percent chance that I'll draw a value uh, way out there in that lower tail. So this this term out here, we define that we or the notation we use is alpha divided by two, and alpha divided by two, uh, where one minus alpha is our confidence level. So in this case, I have, I'm doing a 95% confidence level. So if my confidence level is uh, 95, 1 minus alpha equals 0.95, well then alpha must equal to 0.05. And each of these extremities out here, this is alpha divided by 2, we divide half of that and onto each end of that distribution. So if I go to my Z tables, uh, which hopefully I have handy here, if I go to my Z tables, I want to figure out what is that Z value that defines uh, that space. So what is that value that, that delineates this region? So if I go to the Z tables out here, what I want to do now is look for that probability of 0.025 in that lower tail, right? We're looking, we're looking way down here where's 0 0.025? So we just need to scan this table and hopefully uh, I'll find it right around here. So there's this value uh, of 0 0.025 and you'll see that that corresponds with a Z value of negative 1.96. So that's a value of negative 1.96. Now because this distribution is perfectly symmetric. Uh, not only do I know that this is negative 1.96, but it means that the value of positive 1.96 corresponds to that upper tail region uh, of the same probability. So that gives me in that Z distribution those values of interest. So this is uh, positive 1.96 
and negative 1.96. So again, if I have a, a hat full of numbers and they, they follow the standard normal distribution, if I reach into that hat and I pull out a number, 95% of the time, that number will exist between negative 196 and positive 196. There's a 2.5% chance that it will be greater and a 2.5% chance that it will be less than. Okay, so that's where these numbers come from, these 196, and we'll see that when we get into our, our exercise. So if I come down now into my population distribution, I can I can figure out, I can de define what those values are in my population distribution, and it's not entirely uh, complex. Uh, this this 196 is actually 1.96 standard deviations, right? It's just that in the standard normal, those standard deviations are one. So we often don't include them in the notation because why bother? It's just the one. So down here, it's the, it's the same thing, except now we're looking at these standard errors of the mean. So this is gonna be 1.96 sigma x. So that standard error, I'm just gonna keep it shorthand for now. And down here, this is negative 1.96 sigma x, x bar. So now I've got those two values that correspond with my population distribution. And again, we need to know what does that mean? Well, what it implies here is that very much the same uh, interpretation, except now I'm looking at sample means. So it means that between these two values, if I draw a sample of whatever n is, a sample of size n, 95% of the time that sample mean will fall between these two values, 1.96 um, standard errors from the mean. So 95% of the time any sample of size n will fall between those two values. There's of course a 2.5% chance there's a 2.5% chance that it will exist outside greater than that upper region and a 2.5% chance that it's down here. So we can see how these are, you know, they're very similar. They, they really are connected to one another, these two distributions. So now coming to our confidence interval, what are we doing? So we define this distance between here and here. So this distance, 1.96 sigma x bar. This is what we define as our margin of error. Margin of error. And it's exactly the same as this distance here, right? And that, that should be straightforward. They're the same distance from the mean, 1.96 um, standard errors. So there's the margin of error. I'm gonna abbreviate it here as me here. Me. So now I take a sample from that distribution of size n, okay, whatever that whatever that sample size is, and let's say that sample uh, that sample mean falls here. So there's that sample mean. Now if we add to it and subtract from it, uh, one margin of error. So if I look at here's this margin of error up here. So this is plus 1.96. Uh, oops, sigma x. Get my eraser here, what's going on? There we go. Uh, 1.96 standard errors. And we subtract from it. So this is negative 1.96 standard errors. Well, here I can see that includes the sample mean. Uh, sorry, that includes the population mean is part of that interval. If I draw another sample, there's a 95% chance that it's gonna be between those two limits is 1.96 uh, standard error. So let's say it's down here this time. So here I take a sample and that sample mean is down here. Again, I add and subtract one margin of error. So this is positive 196 standard errors and this is negative. So this is X bar plus and X bar minus uh, one standard error. Again, we see that Given that 95% of the time, that mean is going to fall between those two limits, that means that there's a 95% chance 
that when I construct an interval around any sample mean, that that interval will contain the unknown population mean. Of course, there's a 5% chance that it won't, right? So there's a 2.5% a chance that maybe my sample mean that I draw is somewhere way out here. And if that's the case, I can construct an interval around it. This is negative 196 uh, standard errors. This is plus 196 standard errors. And we can see there, well, it, it doesn't contain the true population mean in that case. And similarly, if I were to do the same thing, maybe there's that 2.5% chance that my sample mean is somewhere way down here. And so we can go through the same exercise. And we can see that in that extremity, in that extreme, it's not going to include uh, the population mean. But 95% of the time, it will. Because 95% of the time, the sample means are going to be between those two regions. So 95% of the time, it's going to be somewhere in here. This is getting messy. <laughs> Which means that when I construct an interval uh, around that mean with plus or minus one margin of error, that interval will contain the unknown population mean 95% of the time. Okay, so this is, uh, I'm actually going to end this video now and then we'll come back and we'll actually do these exercises. So this is the prequel to, um, to what is to come. Uh, but hopefully this gives it some context and, and we'll make uh, calculating these things and interpreting these things uh, a little bit easier to do. So I'm going to end this video here and then I'll come back uh, in just uh, a couple of seconds. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.